everybody. Kenny, you mentioned after the scrimmage that you hadn't penciled out a starting five yet and that you wanted them to kind of make it hard on you to come to that decision with the exhibition tomorrow. Have you come any closer to maybe penciling out your starting five or the rotations? And if so, did they make it hard on you? Um, good question. I have not came up with a starting five yet. Uh, the way I'm viewing this is I'm allowing them to make me make my job hard or easy. I look at this like I got 12, 13, 14 guys, 15 guys. I hate to say it to you, I'll start any of those five. I don't care who they are. I just need, and it's more important how you finish a game than how you start. Uh, but also, I want there to be competition everywhere. Um, you know, one of the things that I've talked about is um, defensively, desperate. If I have a group on the floor and the other team is scoring easy, another five may come in. Um, I want the pressure to be on them to know that we're trying to pitch shutouts. Doesn't mean that we are, but we're trying to. It means they may make a shot, but it'll be a hard shot that they're making. Uh, there will be pressure all over the floor, and that's going to dictate how long you play, who's on the floor, all of those things. So. I have not made up my mind who I'm going to start yet. Uh, a lot of people are very anxious, uh, players and coaches, wanting to see who's going to start that first five in this game tomorrow. But for me, it's more about you know how you play when you're on the court. I'm evaluating every single player, every single player. So, Kenny, what do you what do you want to see from your guys? tomorrow night and in, in, in against competition for the first time, what will make you happy out there? I want, I want the guys to play with a confidence, with a fire. Um, I want them to show that all the conditioning that we're doing, we can play fast. I want us to be physical. I want us to be connected. I want there to be um, chemistry on the floor chemistry on the bench from the players, cheering for those that are in the game. Um, I want us to look like a unit that cares about each other. Um, those things are important because if we're going to be a really good team, it's not going to be one guy, two guys. It's going to be a group of guys that have all bought into each other and, and that they're doing this together. Based on what you've seen so far, are you confident you're going to see those that list that you just named um i know what i'm asking for russ i i think that um i think they're capable i've seen it in spurts i need to see it consistently uh, i need to see it when lights are on um, i need to see it you know when times are hard not when times are good uh, there's a lot of dynamics to this that you know in a practice against each other, yeah, you see it. And we have gotten better. But when the lights are on and you're playing another competition, another team that's competitive, that's just as talented as you or more talented than you, I need to see it then. Hey, Kenny, have you, um, you know, I'm heading into the scrimmage, you said that you had had uh, Sky and Trey a matchup against each other, but now that you're actually going to be playing someone else this week, have you started uh, pairing them together on offense and defense? and? Have, have you not. seen anything there? I have not. I flipped it. I put Sky and Mike against Mike and and Trey against Sky. Now I put Mike and Trey, Mike and Sky together against Trey. I'm trying to find out who's going to fight, who's going to have quote unquote the lesser talent and make it hard on the guys with the more talent. And I got time. Um, you know, I know the games are coming up, the exhibition games, but I'm using every single moment to put these kids in situations where I want them to win in practice and I want them to know why I'm doing what I'm doing. Um, and for the most part, they all have, have, have stood up and, and fought through it. So it's been good to see. Can you talk about the, the leadership on the team? Um, 
the leadership has been good. People that have watched us practice have came in and talked about how connected they are and connected through adversity. Uh, for example, if, if we're running and guys are behind, the other guys are talking to them. Uh, connected in the fact that um, when things aren't right, they huddle up and I can hear Sky, I can hear Trey, I can hear Mike, I can hear Brandon, JJ saying, look, Hersey, like, listen, guys, he's going to run us if we don't do it right. Let's focus. Let's tighten up. Let's do it. Let's do it because we don't want to do the extra running. I like to see that. Um, the leadership, I think, you know, I want it to be one guy or two guys, but it's a lot better when you got six, seven, eight guys. And so that's what I'm seeing trending. Again, we haven't played an opponent. I want to see that same leadership when we're playing Duke, Carolina, Kentucky, uh, Texas, Simmons. <laughs> I want to see that same deal. So that's what I'm looking for. But I'm happy with what we're doing right now. The leadership has been good. You can see guys talking, see guys' spirits. You can see guys leading. Um, I just need to see it when things are hard. I meant to ask this last week. When we were talked in July, you talked about your staff and you knew what you wanted to do with those two on-court positions. Can you talk about what you did and, 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 and kind of moving some guys around? Well, first, I think um, I had the fortunate opportunity to be with Gabe in New York, and he's a superstar. Um, I watched him work every day. I watched him train players every day. I watched his knowledge of the game his knowledge of offenses and defenses at the NBA level at what people were doing. And he was really, really good. Um, and I decided that if I'm going to bring somebody with me, it's going to be a young guy like him who lives in the gym, lives in the film room, studies the game, has a great personality, um, a good person, high character person. So for me, that was a no brainer putting him in. The second spot is a home run, it's Milt. Um, Milt has been an assistant coach before. Uh, his experience I don't have to talk about. We all know what it is. Um, he knows the game. Again, my brother, he knows me. Uh, but also, he's qualified. Um, he's qualified for the job, and, and I love having him with me. You have, can you talk about your relationship with Jerry getting this game about and also Tony Branch? I know Tony was already coaching when, even when you came here, but kind of how, how well you know him. Well, when I decided that this could be a possibility, I called Jerry and I said, Jerry, I need you to get Reverend Cosby on the phone. I want to talk to both of you together. Um, yes, Jerry's family. He's a part of this fiber of Louisville basketball. But also, I wanted – the black community, Simmons, St. Stephen's, Reverend Cosby. I wanted them to know that I'm in this seat and I want to do something right and do something good for them as well. So for me, it was more about that, more about having um, a community of people come and support both of us. Um, and for this community and for them to be right here in Louisville, perfect. Uh, to do it with, with Jerry Eves and Reverend Kevin Cosby, perfect for me uh, because I respect both. I love both of them. And it's an opportunity for both of us to get something out of it. Have there been any tendencies in practice, whether good or bad, that you're looking for them to continue in exhibition play, whether uh, it's been good or bad? For me, I think, um, you know, people are going to test us physicality-wise uh, because you look at Dennis's body, you look at JJ's body, yeah, they're good basketball players, but they are slender. And, you know, college basketball is going to try to, it's physical. Um, and so I'm constantly on these guys about, you may be thin, but you better be hitting. <laughs> uh, if you don't hit, then you deserve to get hit. That's the way this works. Uh, the aggressor hits first. So I'm looking for us to play physical, to build on that, not just those two guys, but all our bigs, all our forwards, all our wings. Um, 
I'm looking for us to get better at passing the basketball, taking care of the ball, um, playing with a cohesiveness on the offensive end where the ball touches the paint multiple times, where we get any shot we want. Um, and then I'm looking for us to just fight. Um, that's the big one for me, just fight. Fight, not just, not a fist fight, but fight to be disciplined in what you're doing um, to make sure that you're successful. Let the other person know you're in a hard competition and that you're playing it to win. Those are the things I'm looking for. Yeah, Kenny, you've talked about Sky, obviously, as your primary ball handler. How confident are you so far in Ty Lore and being able to relieve him at times and, and run point? Very confident, Ty Lore and Hersey, to be to be honest with you. Um, Ty Lore is quick, fast, he's aggressive, um, he's fearless. Um, he's going to help us this year. He's really a good basketball player. There are things about the college game he's going to learn. Um, and I tell all the freshmen this, it's unfair to you, but you're going to have to learn on the fly. And you can't be a freshman. <laughs> and it's hard when I say that for them to understand exactly what I'm saying. If you play like a freshman like this, the speed of the game is too fast for you. The physicality of the game is too fast for you. Uh, the ability to think and anticipate is too much for you. Then you need a year or two to figure it out. And we can't be the team we need to be. In order for us to be that team we need to be, we need to be, we got to figure it out fast. Our freshmen have to figure it out fast. Um, and I need Ty Law to do that as well as uh, Caleb and, and Curtis, who also is a very good basketball player who I have played him at the point a lot. Kenny, um, just uh, speaking about Dennis so specifically, um, given given um, uh, given uh, Danny's uh, history and at uh, working with bigs, how have you seen how have you seen uh, you know um, their work together um, on the court and you know. Um, just that sort of like mentorship grow since Dennis has arrived here on campus? I think uh, all the coaches have done stuff with, with Dennis and Danny's done a great job after practice of grabbing Dennis for 10 minutes and, and just taking him through stuff that he has to do. Um, Dennis is a sponge. Um, this is hard for Dennis at seven foot one, being able to not just stand under the basket and let offenses come to you and you try to block a shot the way that he did in high school is hard. I'm asking him to play on the perimeter defensively. I'm asking him to play offense on the perimeter and cut to the post. I'm asking his movements to be better. Um, and he's embraced that. Now, you may look at it and say, okay, why would you do that? I'm trying to develop a force. If I can get Dennis Evans to figure out all these things, and get his body stronger and anticipate at seven foot one and the way he blocks shots and his touch and his feel for the game um, and get his conditioning up. I have a player that can change the dynamic of a basketball team. And that's what I'm pushing him to do. Um, and I hope and pray by the end of the year, he is one of the best big men in the country. I think uh, the first thing is when you talk about, example, volleyball, and you see that atmosphere. You talk about the Notre Dame game and football, and you see that atmosphere. Um, what you're watching for, from their standpoint is support of a winning product. Um, and they want to be a part of that. I think you have to be blind if you don't see it as an athlete and say, guys, if we pour into this, they're going to come and support us like crazy. We got to pour into this um, and not take it for granted that we're just a basketball team and basketball players that, yeah, in our minds, in our world, people know all of us. Um, you go in California, they still talk about Scott Clark, you, along with Dennis, along with Trey, um, Hersey as well. But now 
I put you in this environment, you have an opportunity to get a whole community behind you. Um, and it becomes national. So I hope they're watching. We talk about it. Um, and they understand the importance of having a great fan support. They understand that. They're seeing it firsthand on winning products. They still talk about, at times, the games we played last year when we wasn't winning and the fans were great. They still talk about that. So I think they're seeing it and learning from those teams. Kenny, for so many years, results in exhibition games have kind of been an afterthought. But for this particular group, how important is it for them? I know you're going through the process, but to get off on the right foot. You said the key word, the process. Um, I probably would not talk about winning the game. I'm going to talk about being fierce. I'm going to talk about being desperate. I'm going to talk about being aggr the aggressor. I'm going to talk about things that the process will take care of the win. I need them to embrace that. I'm going to talk about if I got a group on the court and you're not playing the pitch a shutout for four minutes, then I'm putting another group in. Uh, and I want that group to try to pitch a shutout. <laughs> so I'm trying to create, through the process, a culture of fighting, a culture of perfection defensively a culture of togetherness offensively to where it'll take care of wins and losses and we'll see the end result of that. All right, thanks, All right guys.